Good morning, Dr. Wedding and members of the board. My name is Josh Dalton, and I'm a member of Young at Heart Consulting. We are pleased to deliver the findings and conclusions of our 10-week project. This was designed to develop and enhance your targeted marketing efforts in order to drive viewer interest in your products and ticket sales at the box office. This is in addition to the final report that we delivered last week. We appreciate your engagement with us throughout this process and we are excited to share the results with you. And with that, I'll briefly introduce you to our team. We have Lynn sauter Beal in charge of architecture, Aleem Hasham, our benevolent project manager, John Hockenin, who is in charge of software implementation, myself, and then Eric Lewis in charge of data integration. Here's a brief outline of our presentation. Now let's uh, delve into the presentation by leading off with the problem that you asked us to help you address. Now you're all extremely familiar with these issues so I don't want to dwell on them too much. But this slide contains the major challenges facing the film industry today. Movie ticket sales and revenue are down on a steady decline in fact. And conversely, movie production costs are up, as are the marketing costs for those movies. A major blockbuster can cost over $200 million in marketing costs alone. Now, we were brought in to address that issue, the marketing cost issue, and our models will help you be more efficient in spending those budgets. Finally, the studios lack insight into the preferences of potential moviegoers. Or as one movie marketing exec said, Quote, our ignorance of our consumers is still extreme. That means that studios still don't have a good idea, still don't have a robust profile into what consumers are looking for, what people want to see in theaters. Now to add to all this background that we provided on the previous slide, there's also current movie marketing practices which have not changed much in the past few decades. Even though the media consumption habits of movie consumers have changed dramatically even within the last five years. So that approach is to spend the vast majority of your budget on expensive TV ads or what I like to call the spray and pray approach. Now TV does have the potential to hit broad swaths of the population but due to viewing habits of today um, TV ads are much less effective even with, than they were ten years ago. People can DVR shows and skip over advertisements. TV viewership is much more fragmented due to the sh just the sheer number of available channels that people can view. So that is, TV ads are very ineffective. Video sharing platforms like YouTube and Vimeo, they use algorithms to direct ads and movie trailers to individuals based on search history and expressed interest. In other words, they usually find a person who has already expressed interest in a movie and is already more likely to go anyway. Now these individuals probably don't need to be marketed to, probably don't need movie trailers directed to them because they're likely to go. So the key question for us that we wanted to answer is who are the people who are likely to go see a movie that the current approaches are missing? Our proposed solution makes the marketing for your movies more efficient by providing something that you have not had until this point and that is an understanding of your consumers. And we do this by using consumers identified personality as the basis for directed marketing efforts. There is a pretty substantial scientific and academic research that supports this business model that personality factors into the entertainment preferences of individuals. And that's true for uh, music, for television shows, and of course for movies. Now all the studies up until this point that look at the relationship between personality and movie genre preferences have been based on the big five personality traits. We have chosen to go with the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator or MBTI. And most of you have probably taken the MBTI personality tests or are at least familiar with it. Um, they break us into 16 personality types by how we process and view the world and how we interact with others. Um, within the world. The 16 types can be grouped into MBTI temperaments or archetypes and uh, given the deadline that we had and the limitations of our data set that we acquired 
We kept our model's scope to identify the four archetypes and not the 16 individuals. Now in the chart on this slide, uh, we've broken out some famous characters from a, a property of yours, Star Trek, uh, to serve as models of each archetype, to sort of give you a, a, a snapshot of what each of these uh, archetypes are like. They also have uh, a brief description next to them, and based on what we know of each archetype, an inferred movie preference for each of those um, types of individuals. Uh, given some more time, uh, we could conduct some market research to confirm our inferences, but for the time being, we, we are fairly confident in uh, our assumptions. With the models we built, we can take a, uh, a relatively small sample of user-generated text, such as a, a few tweets or a few Facebook posts, and identify an individual's personality archetype with uh, greater than random accuracy. Now this information is extremely valuable. It can enable Paramount to target ads for movies that would appeal to specific personality archetypes and thus raise the probability of an ad doing what it's supposed to do, which is to get someone to the theaters. Now to see how we did all of this, to see the data that we acquired, what we did to prepare it for our models and how we built those models and what those were and what the results of those models were, I will now pass the baton to John. To start the discussion about the modeling process, we want to first talk about the data set. Uh, because the models which we will build will only be as good uh, as the data upon which they're built. This particular data set came from personalitycafe.com, which is a discussion forum where people have already self-identified themselves by Myers-Briggs type and then they have a number of different types of discussions some of which uh, are about personality and others on other topics. The data sets comprised of a little less than 9,000 records and within each record uh, the last 50 posts of the individual are in the record and as indicated, uh, it's the full Myers-Briggs type of which there are 16. For our models, we are only modeling the archetype, so we're going to uh, change that type data down to the four archetypes. Here's an example record. And as you can see, the first uh, item is the Myers-Briggs type, and then that's followed with the 50 posts and those are separated by up bars and uh, so there's, there's a range of data in the posts. So the first thing that we'll need to do is uh, expand and clean the data. So let's start with that uh, sample record that we previously displayed and so the first step is, is to expand that record so that we have multiple uh, posts rather than uh, a single record with 50 posts. And as you can see, there are different uh, kinds of information in them. Uh, that middle record that's highlighted is a blank record uh, and doesn't have anything. And then there are two other records there where the only um, post within the record is a YouTube uh, link and those don't have any usable content. So we're going to remove those. Well, because this is personalitycafe.com uh, discussion forums, you'll notice that a number of the records have discussion about uh, the personality types and we determined that uh, there was a great amount of this and, and uh, that if they weren't removed, then uh, the models would likely be utilizing that information. But of course, in the kinds of uh, posts that we're trying to model um, for purposes of this project, we're not gonna have Myers-Briggs personality type information. And so what we did was we removed that data. And that included even references to things like guardians and idealists uh, that are sort of derivative terms from the Myers-Briggs types. 
So now we have uh, a consolidated uh, set of records uh, with that's been cleaned up a little bit, and uh, we still have the uh, full Myers Briggs type. We need to convert that into the archetype, and in the case of ISFP, the SP is uh, the archetype, and that leaves us with. Uh, a relatively polished data set from which we can work. Now that we have a clean set of data, uh, we need to balance it. Uh, the bar chart there shows the relative sizes of the different archetypes by count. And because the SJs had the smallest count, we kept all of those records. For the SPs, we only had to do a little bit of sampling, and we uh, so we uh, took a few less records. But for the NTs and NFs, uh, we sampled those and we reduced uh, the total counts considerably. So to summarize, we started with 433,000 records, there were 16 types. After we cleaned them, we had about oh, 410,000 records. That includes the deletion of the uh, blank records or records that didn't have any information. Uh, we had four archetypes, but the data was unbalanced. And after sampling, we had about 90,000 records, but they were relatively balanced. And so we split those into a training set of 80,000 records and a validation set of 10,000 records. So with a completely prepared set of data, we're now ready to do some modeling. So we pursued a number of different model types. First of all, there were neural networks and convolutional neural networks. And that's a modern technology that allows uh, a considerable amount of abstraction uh, in them. We also decided to pursue a Naive's Bayes model, and that's a probabilistic model. And finally, we also did a support vector machine model, and that's a model that's a little bit less probabilistic um, and can allow one to separate different categories uh, from one another. Finally, there are model combinations called ensembles where one combines models. And in our case, we combine some neural nets and we also combine some neural nets with a support vector machine. So we created uh, three different ne neural network models and we made one ensemble from them. And the first neural network model was a simple model. Uh, no convolutions. It did use embeddings, which is a way of transforming uh, the data. Uh, but the most important thing to take away is the accuracy. In this case, it had a 26% accuracy. Now, of the four archetypes, two of the archetypes uh, had predictions that were better than random, and two of the predictions did not. Now, that accuracy uh, is 26.1 percent. Uh, random is one in four, 25 percent. So you can see that the accuracy is only slightly better than random, which isn't that great. So the second model that we developed was a convolutional model. Uh, it used a different kind of embedding, and uh, its accuracy was now almost 30 percent. Uh, and it got three of the four archetypes uh, correct in terms of better than random. So we're, we're making progress. The third neural net um, w had just about the same level of accuracy, but uh, it used a different set of embeddings and it only had one of the four uh, archetypes as better than random. And so one might think that one would just simply um, toss Model 3 away, but instead we combined Model 2 and Model 3, and we ended up with a model where we had an increased accuracy above and beyond Model 2. 
And that's because Model 2 and Model 3 model the data a little bit differently, and so the combination was better than either of the individual ones. And uh, the number of archetypes that it was uh, better than random was two, uh, which was in between the three and the one of the previous two models. So moving forward, uh, we also tried some other models, uh, Naives Bay and uh, Support Vector. Now, the Naives Bay is a simple probabilistic model. It didn't use embeddings. It used um, what's called a bag of words, which is you just basically take the individual words. And it also used uh, some computations along the bag of words. And most importantly, the accuracy was above the previous neural network ensemble. So we're still um, getting better. Uh, unfortunately, uh, only one of the archetypes was better than random. So it's pretty lopsided in terms of uh, the performance, where one is much better and the other three are uh, much worse than random. So then we try to support vector model. And the support vector model, it avoids strict probabilities. Uh, so there's a little bit less overfitting. And it uh, is able to separate the different classes of the archetypes. Uh, it also used a bag of words um, approach. And as you can see, the accuracy has gone up even a little bit more. And now we're up to three of the four uh, archetypes as better than random. So once again, uh, we've made progress. Uh, and so then we decided to combine the neural, the best of the neural net models with the support vector model. And as it turns out, that is considerably better because now all four of the archetypes are being uh, predicted better than random. They all have positive predictions and the total accuracy is up to 33.3%. And that's much better than random, which is about 25%. So if we plot these on a graph, um, we have uh, overall accuracy uh, versus the number of archetypes better than random. and uh, as you move to the right, it is better, more predictive, more accurate. So the first of the models was the simple neural net model, which came in with two archetypes better than random, but only slightly better than average, so uh, at about 26%. Next was the uh, second neural net model, which came in with three, uh, and then we had the third neural net model, which was only one archetype, but about the same amount of accuracy, and the combination of the two was uh, a little bit better than both of those, uh, but had two archetypes. We then created a naive Bayes model, which was a little better yet, but now we were back down to one archetype better than random. We then tried a support vector machine, which was the best yet to date, and had three of the four archetypes as better than random. And then when we combined the neural net ensemble with the support vector machine, we ended up with a, a model which gave us all four archetypes better than random, and we had the best predictive value. So that completes the discussion of the modeling. The purpose for our dashboard visualizations are to reinforce our written reporting through selected KPIs that will visually represent our modeling and your organization's efforts to market new movie releases to your customers. To demonstrate the return on your investment of matching consumer personality types, leading to new movie release preferences, and more. We have leveraged the dashboard technology of Microsoft's Power BI platform to bring to your organization stunning PC-based design, as well as mobile dashboard presented using the Power BI app. 
and onto our dashboards. The new release dashboard. This dashboard is created to depict each new release movie against their perspective archetype. This allows Paramount to gain a better understanding of their users and expected growth rate of the new release. As requested, we are presenting a live demonstration using these dashboards. The visualizations within the dashboard are interrelated when each component is connected using like attributes. For example, archetype. When I click on SP, notice the focus change in the movie list by archetype. And then back. Our next dashboard is the Chicago City Map. This dashboard demonstrates Chicago as a prototype to gain an understanding on where these users are located by archetype, zip code, all against the closest movie studios in their vicinity. This will allow Paramount to place financial resources on targeted marketing on those zip codes. Our next dashboard is known as Chicago Directed Ads. This dashboard takes our previous dashboard and broken down into directed ads and directed ads shared by movie against their respective zip codes, providing for even more value and insight to Paramount's new releases. Our next dashboard is ROI by movie. This dashboard provides anticipated total gross sales of movies before and after our optimal investment suggestions. And finally is our All Up dashboard. This dashboard is All Up combined dashboard that focuses on multiple KPIs for review on a single dashboard. And next we will transition our presentation into the mobile dashboards. There we will present the new release dashboard, the Chicago Directed Ads, and ROI by Movie. I'm clicking on the Power BI app using the iPhone. Our mobile app dashboards demonstrates the effectiveness of using Power BI and the Power BI app to view your dashboards anywhere, anytime. The first dashboard we're going to review is the new release dashboard. This mobile dashboard is created to depict each new release movie against their respective archetype. Our next dashboard is Chicago Directed Ads. This mobile dashboard is broken into directed ads and directed ads shared by movie against their respective zip codes. Our next app is ROI by Movie. This mobile dashboard shows anticipated total gross sales by movies before and after our optimal investment suggestions. This concludes our presentation of dashboards built thus far in the project. These dashboards may be modified to accommodating changing market conditions, KPIs, or to focus marketing on efforts on selected geographies. The use cases for delivering dashboards using Power BI and Power BI mobile app is limitless. These visualization methodologies will assist in growing your ROI, linking consumer personality types to movie release preferences. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Now that you've heard about the Myers-Briggs personality types and how we build our models and then scrub social media postings to identify the type of the poster, what do we do now? On the slide is one of my favorite quotes, real artist ship. It's attributed to Steve Jobs back in the early days of Apple, but what does it mean? It means that it's not enough to simply be creative. You have to actually produce art. Similarly, it isn't enough to create a great model. We have to turn it into an operationalized process that Paramount can deploy within your organization. As Josh discussed earlier, our models take the inputs, text written on social media outlets, and predict their likely MBTI personality type. Our analysis demonstrated that Paramount would expect to receive a 14% return on investment if you implement the models according to our recommendations. So how do we get that model from Young at Heart's infrastructure into Paramount's infrastructure? In the full report we delivered to Paramount last week, one of the deliverables was an implementation plan. Within this plan, 
we made recommendations for system infrastructure and the human capital necessary to stand up and deploy the models. We've recommended hardware and software, implementing Power BI to set up the dashboards that Eric reviewed, as well as a total of three full-time employees dedicated to program management, architecture, software development, and integration. Young at Heart will support you throughout this process, ensuring the final delivery is geared to meet expectations. Not included in the full-time equivalent assumptions on this page are paramount employees who may support or use the models in the future, such as your marketing analytics team or other business management users. As paramount as the expert in the headcount and capacity necessary to run your business, we did not make recommendations for the ongoing client support model post-implementation. However, we are more than willing to participate in a collaborative review and provide our opinions on Paramount's plan as you build out the human capital infrastructure based on our historical experience with previous clients. So once we get through the implementation plan and have the models in place and ready for Paramount's use, are we done? No. As you've seen throughout this journey, creating, training, and testing models is an iterative process. Taste changes, language changes, movies change, and Paramount needs to be able to keep pace with those changes. We've already reviewed several model types and their predictive capabilities, but that is certainly not an exhaustive list of available options. For additional ongoing research, Young at Heart recommends a review of random forest models that construct multiple decision trees to identify classifications. We could also attempt more sophisticated models, such as a gradient boost or the Black Hawk helicopter of models versus the Toyota Camry. Of course, introducing complexity comes with additional challenges to explain those models, govern those models, and properly put the staff in place to deploy them on an ongoing basis. Research is a continual process, so the number of models and combinations are essentially endless. However, back to our jobs quote, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Real artists ship and Paramount wants to be able to drive revenue. In a similar vein, applying the models to a one-for-one -one movie advertisement is great, but can we use these for other purposes? Perhaps Paramount wants to explore cross-marketing movies to the non-dominant MBTI types, or employing personality reviews in hiring or organizational analytics. Music, another form of popular entertainment, is also likely to be driven by per certain personality types. We could consider marketing new albums or new artists or upcoming concerts based on social media postings. The future is wide open for how these models can drive the business forward. Thank you, Lynn, for taking us through the journey of implementation and recommendation of the problem solution at hand. Mr. Wedding, as we have discussed through these past 10 weeks, we have taken the time to understand the problem, worked through various models in developing an optimal solution, and presented these through interactive dashboards that work both on desktop computers as well as mobile devices. We trust you have enjoyed getting a deeper understanding as well on the return of investment matrix, which meets your company's expectation, as well as other opportunities presented to improve the bottom line. We wanted to take a moment to thank Paramount Pictures for all their continued support and effort in assisting us through this journey, as well as to Team Young at Heart for their time and dedication through this journey. Mr. Wedding, we look forward to taking a quantum leap into the future with you. If you have any questions, do let us know and we will promptly resolve.